All right, here's another comic shop talk show. Uh, this one's gonna be about services that you can provide to make extra cash for your business in helping other businesses. Now the first one I'm gonna talk about, <laughs> if you've seen some of my other shows, uh, is about CGC. Um, this is how you can make money with CGC as a shop, not by actually grading your books, but by providing services to other people. A lot of people are not going to stop grading their books. And I think you can actually uh, do this service with maybe PGX. I don't think CBCS has it, and I don't think, because uh, I think they're owned by Beckett now, and I don't know if Beckett has this service anymore, where as a dealer you can provide the services of filling out the form and sending them all in, and everybody gets a little bit of a discount for you to do that. But CGC does have it. And they also have uh, auto um, autograph certification so you can sign up and I don't know what rigmarole you have to go to go through but when you have an artist in your shop if you're this guy certified by CGC you can watch and make sure that he signs every book and then provide the service of then mailing that book to CGC then you're gonna make money in that for that situation so that's a service you can provide for CGC and for your customer that you can make some money on. I guess if you were having artists come to your shop and sign in your shop on a regular basis, it might be something for you to have if you uh, want your customers to trust CGC. Again, I have my beliefs. This is a, I don't do it, but it is a service that you can provide and make money on to help keep your store open. Some of the sports card companies also have that service where um, if you send in a certain number of cards, you get it at a certain discounted price per card. That way you can do a, if you're very good at sports cards, uh, you could do a pre-screening, let your customers know, well, what grade were you wanting to get on this? If you don't feel that the grade is worth grading it, if the card is not worth grading, you can provide all that service. And then by sending it in, you can either pass that savings on to your customer or you can make that difference. It's not much, but when you put it over a couple of hundred cards, it'll add up and make you some money. I know that there's comic shops that do appraisals and they charge for the appraisal. What that ends up being is they charge per hour after they finish looking the books. If you want to sell the books, they, some of them either will take that off the cost that they would pay you for the books, right? So let's say I, as a uh, somebody that charges for uh, appraisal, says the collection's worth $1,000. And then as a buyer, as a store, I would pay 500 for them. And the appraisal fee is, let's say, 200. So that means that I would give you $300 for your collection, and that would come right off the bottom line. The other thing is, is that people will say, okay, if you allow me to buy it for the 500, I'm gonna give you the appraisal for free. Other people would say, I need the $200 for the appraisal and maybe they don't wanna buy it or maybe you don't wanna sell it to them, but then they get the $200 for that. This is just an example of some things that you can do to make money. I always give a free appraisal, whether they sell it to me or not. It's just the way I run a store, but there are opportunities to make money on some services. You can, if you have space that you're doing for Magic the Gathering or Pokemon to run games and you're providing a service for them, I've talked about that, but then you still have all that space. I know guys that run birthday parties. Uh, I did it a couple of times. I did make money on it. I just wasn't, it didn't make me comfortable. I, 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 I you know, my store's not a beauty, beauty pageant store, so, I, f I feel bad about renting it out. So like my space is always free to the community, um, it, unless it's a tournament. And then even in the tournament, all the money that goes into the tournament is spent back on the players. That's my policy. But if you have space, it is rentable and you can make some good money on it. Something I've been thinking about recently is I used to do a lot of DVDs and VHS in sales, but I'm actually thinking about bringing them back for rentals. So if you have the space in your store to do rentals, you can make 
some very good money on that, especially if you're in a low income area. You know, a lot of us who have enough, uh, I don't want to say too much and I don't want to say too little, but if you have enough, so you have every streaming service, you never think about re renting a, a, a video. But if you live in an area where most people can't even afford cable, uh, they don't have a streaming service. If they're real savvy, maybe they're doing some pirating. I've had a lot of people very upset at me that I don't sell DVDs anymore. I don't wanna say upset, disappointed, that's a better word. To give up the space, it just wasn't profitable enough selling the DVDs. But on a rental situation, I think that it's very doable. And I don't think I have the space here at the comic shop, but I'm contemplating finding a very small space to do that business. But maybe when you first open your shop, you have a lot of space and that you can't fill with comics, toys, or any other thing that you wanna sell there. Rentals may be a, also a, a, an idea. Yeah, and another thing you can do is contact your local libraries, including the school library. And if they're looking to buy books for their library, like uh, graphic novels, even Scholactic, man, if you're a Scholactic dealer, and it's very easy to become a Scholactic dealer, let me tell you. They just, you send in a form, they check you out, make sure you're still good for on your taxes and that your, you know, your tax ID is uh, still in good standing and you've become a dealer. And so you can provide that to your library. I don't know if the school libraries where you're, you're at buy through a bigger organization like the state and the state sends them down or if your individual librarian can buy them. But your local libraries can. Your local libraries can buy directly from you. You just give them an invoice. They pay the invoice. You provide the books. And that's another great service that you can give to the community and that will make you a little bit of money. You do have to give the libraries kind of a deep discount. Listen, if you want if you want to do it, if it's a not-for-profit library, if you don't have a public library that has public funds and they're uh, doing it as a 501C uh, that some town set up themselves and you're gonna give it to them at cost, you know, there might be a way to work that into some of your taxes too. That's another way that you can make uh, a little decent extra money uh, that you might not have thought of providing a service to somebody that wants it. You know, they, they, they want these books. So you're not forcing it on them. You're not trying, it's not a hard sell. You're doing your best to help the community and keep your store open. The more your store is open, the more the community can grow. The more the community grows, the more they appreciate that you're there for them. So there's a lot of services that you can provide from your store when you think about it, look around. I'm probably missing a bunch. These are just some of the uh, few ones that you can make steady income. Definitely uh, working with the, some of the grading companies, uh, you can make steady income. And it's great because they, you know, you could show them a raw book on your wall, like one of the ones I have up here. And, you know, they're buying it and you say, well, that's a really high grade, you know, that's a really high grade book. And they're like, yeah, I was gonna get it graded. You're gonna like, well, I provide the service. I can, you know, pre-screen it for you or whatever. And then I can send it out to CGC for you or PGX. CBCS, like I said, I tried to do some research on it. I didn't see any affiliates or any way to become an affiliate, but I could be wrong. Let me know. Just put a comment in there that you're already an affiliate with CBCS or with uh, Beckett BGS and I'd love to know that because it just gives you more opportunity, right? So if I'm, you can then give your customer the choice, who would you like us to have it graded by? And if you're an affiliate for all of them, then you can do that. Different ways to make money with your store, you have to always be thinking because it just adds to your bottom line and it makes your store money and it becomes a thing that people then a destination for people to come to because if they're not into comics or they're not into this or they're into comics but they like to hunt at estate sales or anything but you can get them to grade through you because you're going to get 10 percent off or you're sending them all in together whatever benefits you can give them the biggest one is they don't have to worry about the shipping or the insurance and all that uh, or that all that headache and filling out all the paperwork some people aren't good at paperwork you're looking at one really bad at paperwork. I need so much help with that. Please help me. You know what I always say, keep reading comics and open a comic shop. <laughs>